So how's it going? I'm not too bad, man. How you? How have you been? Because you've been a little, you know, you've been a little MIA lately. Yeah. Um. I've been. So I was. I, I was having some health issues, and thankfully, a lot of that has resolved. And then I came back to TikTok, and I'm I'm, I'm like I'm excited to go back to making funny videos. And then I got kind of sucked down this consent drama hole. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> so I'm well, trying to... Nick Foster's good at uh, getting a rise out of people. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm trying to dig myself out of that. And you know, I I know that Nick is always trolling and always trying to get a reaction out of people. I think this is just a a specific issue that I find very personally important. So that's why I, you know, kind of fell for it a little bit. But also I feel like having a counter argument to what Nick has been saying and that what Spooner good. has been saying is like and a also, good thing good to at least you, put out there, you know. So that was kind of why I yeah. thought it was good to give my perspective. No, I think I mean like that's why I talked to the Spooner dude. So basically my perspective was like, you know, when we talk about these things, obviously there are people in mature relationships and like are emotionally intelligent enough to understand what a woman wants. Like they don't have to ask for like express consent. But when it comes to younger people, especially who aren't um, super educated on like you know dating in general like you can't just be like yeah you just have to feel it out you know you can't just go for it on a whim that you might be right because you're not young young people in general are really stupid it's so, like a young man that's never had sex before isn't going to know how to read somebody uh in, like a fully accurate way and there are a lot of situations that end up happening where like i've heard it all the time where women um end up submitting so that they don't like have any violence uh you know enacted upon them and like you know it's just a reality of life i don't think that we lose anything by like teaching young men to like ask for consent and i think you can ask for consent in a sexy way um yeah yeah that's the thing that they don't take into account when they say like oh well it's the girl's responsibility <clears throat> to say no it's like well they they shut down in these situations a lot of times because they're afraid if if you're advancing towards them which is just something that some victims that's how their mentality uh, works when they're in a traumatic situation they just shut down and that's not something you can just teach girls like hey don't shut down when you're in a traumatic situation it's like they can't control that yeah right and like I think because I, I think that there is an argument to be made that in general in society we need women to advocate for themselves more and like women should be more uh, accustomed to saying no I don't like this but then also I think that young like men should be responsible for creating a safe space for them to feel like they can say no um, and that's like a big thing like by asking for consent you're creating a space where a woman is feeling comfortable that they can say no to you. And that's really where I came from it more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, no way am I saying that like, all we have to do is ask for consent and then like, don't listen to women's that like, don't read their body language. And we aren't creating a place where they can say no, they should be able to speak up and say no at any time, you know, but I agree with you that when you have the base level of consent, it just, creates a safer environment in general yeah and but, i think a lot of a lot of his argument seemed to hinge on like women don't find it sexy when you express like explicitly ask for consent but i think that that's just a matter of like the way you ask for like you can ask for consent in a sexy way like you can lean yeah. into a girl you can put your hand on her hip and you can say hey can i kiss you right now or you can just say i want to kiss you you can just say i want to kiss you and if they go yeah then you, you know, that's a, that's a way of asking for consent in a way that's still sexy and motivating um but you know yeah totally and I, and I think we've been, like, conditioned by the media and by, you know, like, movies and things that people, it's not sexy to ask, like, the guy just has to take charge and go for it and stuff. And I feel like over time, if we just condition people to say, like, hey, there's nothing that's not sexy about just asking in a sexy way, like, you look so beautiful, like, can I kiss you or whatever, like, I don't, like... He just kept using anecdotal arguments of all the girls I know would hate it. And I'm like, well, all the girls I've talked to say yeah. they like it. So this is just anecdotes. Well, that's know? what it comes down to is like different anecdotal situations. Because it was like a lot of what we were talking about, too, is like a very anecdotal. And like, you know, um, <clears throat> it's just like, you know, again, like it's like the way that you can ask for consent. It's like it's not that it's not really unsexy to ask for consent. I think it's less the words that you use and more than just the, type, the, the presence that you have. Like if a, if, like if, an, if a girl is attracted to an aggressive dominant male. Um, they'll be attracted to an aggressive dominant male like leaning into them and being like, I want to kiss you right now. Like it's not gonna be like, oh my god, my pussy dried up because you like express and that's like a decent way to express consent is like I want to kiss you. And then that leaves it open to like whether they do or don't. But like it's not they're not gonna fold because a guy asks for consent. It's it's if if they get turned off by somebody asking for consent, they're getting turned off by the way the person is asking for it, not because the person is asking for it. Yeah, that's a really good argument. I hadn't thought about it that way that you can ask for consent in a really like 
lame way. <laughs> Can I yeah. please kiss you? Like, obviously, yeah, that yeah. would be, like... That's but, lame. But, yeah, but both Spooner and Nick were, like, kind of straw manning my argument because I believe that once you're in a relationship with someone, all you have to do is have a conversation with them. And if they're like, hey, I prefer if you don't ask and just go for it, then from then on, you've established that level of consent and your level of boundaries, and then you don't have to ask anymore. What's like, funny. I'm not saying... I'm not yeah. saying like every single time you're with your girlfriend, if you want to hold her hand, you have to ask for her consent or something like that's not the fucking argument. Well, you're just I'm talking making. about social contracts at that point. Like you have to like establish a social contract with your significant other on what they may or may not want. Because like my so yeah. one of one of my partners like uh, actively asking for consent is like always preferable, and the other one they don't want me to explicitly ask. Like everybody's different. It's all about social con uh, contracts with individuals. Um, I don't yeah, think and you've had that conversation them. with them, and then you know yeah, what boundaries. is best for them. Yeah, yeah, and the, what the problem is is that when we really talk about these things, we're not really talking. We're talking about them more in a way of like expressing or setting boundaries. Like we're trying to. That's what we're talking about, and like the best way to move to do it, in my opinion, is that if you're going to set a boundary with somebody, you should start um, by like leaving them open to like having the boundary like open. So it's like okay, ask for consent. If they if they have a particular boundary point, you can do that after a conversation. But to play it safe, you should just ask for consent and create an inviting atmosphere for somebody. And if a girl's gonna lose all respect for you because you asked for consent, like I just that's bizarre. I don't I've never had that because I I'm actually like I was raised by a single mother. Like I've always been pretty expressive about like asking for consent. Um, yeah, I don't I don't find I mean personally I don't think there's anything less sexy about more communication because usually. The more you communicate, the more you understand each other, and then you can have things be more sexy from there. I feel like. Yeah, sure. You know, I just think it's better to like teach young men to ask for consent, like as a pr uh, just overall to avoid situations of women like being hurt, and especially since like you know, I think the biggest issue uh, more than anything else is like more domineering men needing to ask for consent because those are the ones that want to take charge more, and it can be very gray area when a man tries to take charge but ends up like misreading the situation um well intentioned and then they end up like sexually assaulting somebody without actually intending to sexually assault somebody and that's a concept yeah. i don't think that spooner dude quite understands is like um situations where like i've heard a lot of situations where men sexually assault a woman without actually intending to do so because they're trying to do the whole thing where it's like oh i'm just trying to read you and it's like they miscommunicate and they misunderstand the readings yeah, and I keep making that point, and the only thing Nick will respond with is, "Well, read the signals better." It's like, well, no, because you there's can't really gonna have be people who read on it. TikTok, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get that <laughs> we can't have a like a, a good discussion that way, but it's like, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, when you're on like a first date with someone, when you haven't established what the boundaries are, you have to establish the boundaries in some way. Like, it's as simple as that. And then moving forward. No, you don't have to ask consent every single time if you've established the boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the I think part of the thing that like I, probably Nick too, but he doesn't like express anything is that like it's difficult for people to understand situations where like you can accidentally sexually assault somebody because it sounds dumb as shit, but it's yeah. something that like I've very much learned the kind of somewhat recently in my life. It's bizarre. Like and the, and then maybe I'm just attracted to traumatized women, but the amount of women who've expressed like you know their issues to me uh it's almost every woman i've ever engaged with it's insane and i've had sex with like 20 women so it's not like i'm not fucking around uh, and again yeah. maybe i just attract damaged women <laughs> but still you know it's like shit when you see this perspective you're like god damn you yeah know? and 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 they a lot of the response i've gotten is well rapists aren't going to care and it's like there's a spectrum of what is the, well that's the, and someone that's, who is a rapist that's the thing too is like you think that we're like a lot of times and it's, it's really well intentioned people are like oh but like a, like it's like they're not understanding the differences we're not talking about like a rapist versus a non-rapist we're talking about like people who unintentionally rape um and then also creating an atmosphere like and then they don't understand that like an act of somebody who is like a predator and wants to rape somebody the women will generally assume that anybody doing something to them unconsensually is a predator. And if you say no to like a predator, the rape goes from rape to violent rape. And they're not understanding that as well. Cause like it can escalate by get like, by saying like, no, don't do this. It turns, it can very easily escalate towards like a very violent engagement. And that's where a lot of women's yeah. mentality comes from. They're like, I don't want to be violently assaulted. So I will submit to this assault. Uh, it's horrible. It's not easy to so talk about, but yeah, so that it's not worse. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's like a tough. It's like a very tough situation to talk about because like, like they're Nick Foster and Swerd are like not bad people. Like they're nice guys. It's just like there's and you know I think part of it too is the frustration of not being able to communicate what you're trying to communicate to people. 
because they just simply aren't like understanding your perspective from things. And I think that like that's like another issue as well. Yeah. I think I think you and me are pretty much on the same page. And yeah, people need to understand that like yes, there are rapists who are psychopaths and who will just absolutely not care if you give consent or not, but like you said, there are accidental assaults where it's, if, it's so hard to label that it like, sounds so bizarre when you you know what I mean but yeah it's a, it's a weird thing but the, I mean that's where like good sex ed comes in where if you can really teach people how consent works and how that you do have to establish those boundaries from the get-go then you can decrease those numbers of people who like most people don't want to hurt someone else and I'm sure oh, that yeah. I think the reason why I've gotten such a backlash is because these people are realizing there's times where I've gone in and kissed girls where maybe, you know, I didn't really know whether they wanted me to or not. <laughs> is that what, is that what you said? And then they're like, Oh, you're one of them. Is that what they said? Um, no, <laughs> but, Oh, okay. Is there like a story there or do you, I mean, you don't have to wait, say it to me. I'm, wait, you, with me personally. Yeah. No, you said that there's a situation where you kissed a girl and she didn't like it or something. I thought that's no, what no, 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 no. What, what I'm oh, saying is okay. I'm getting, I'm getting backlash from people. And I'm thinking that maybe some of the people who are giving me backlash when I say you should ask for consent are people who have been in situations where they've kissed someone without getting the proper consent first. Well, yeah, of course, nobody. That's a good point. Like nobody wants to be somebody who like and unintentionally predatorize somebody. Yeah, for sure. That's probably true. It's a tough. And I mean, I, I though, agree. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I've only really had one serious girlfriend for like four years, so I haven't, you know, dated a lot of people. And I, I do agree that you can get nonverbal consent like nonverbal consent is a thing it's just not as safe as a society for us to push push that you should always go for nonverbal consent and reading body language because that's going to lead to more unintentional victims right yeah no I, I think that like status quo wise like mo like all young men should ask for like uh confirmed consent until you are able to understand how to read women because and also another thing is like how do you teach somebody to read women and you can't you have to learn through experience and so like you, you shouldn't learn how to read women through experience um <clears throat> by like not taking it's like play it safe like ask for consent you could do it in a sexy way like it's not a big deal you know and and women aren't a monolith either if one woman is going to give body language that means one thing and another woman can give the same signal and mean something else you know that's very true or like even like it's hard to understand the subtleties in a lot of these situations as well you know like how do you how how do you know if the woman was like you know like you said like yeah some one woman i have a particular reaction in one way but you don't know if that means like hey here's some consent you know yeah and when i was arguing with spooner dude he's like well guys are just not gonna do that and i'm like well that's a very well that's like a societal like, thing though we can teach men to do that and like we could teach women to find consent sexier too like it's a lot of these things are social like constraints like, you could teach women to find it sexier um for and for, i think yeah. I, I think a lot of i think a lot of women do and if you're with a woman who does not find consent sexy then just talk with her just have a conversation <laughs> and then and then you don't have to ask for consent if she said please don't ask me before you kiss me yeah right it's 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 so funny though because like louis ck has a joke about it and louis ck's joke is like oh like he was with a girl and like he kept trying to like make a move but she kept saying like no and then she's like oh i want you to just like i just want you to go for it and take it and it's like well you want me to rape you on the off chance that you liked it and it's like that's kind of the situation oh that my we get god to. yeah yeah you know it's like <laughs> I mean, this is like an awkward thing to talk about, but me and my girlfriend have like a, a little bit of a dom sub thing going on. And oh, sometimes yeah. are, you the, are you the dom or the sub, Brian? <laughs> I'm the sub. No, I'm the I'm the dom. Okay. Hey, there's nothing wrong but, with you the sub, you know, nothing wrong with it. But like we know this about each other, and sometimes she wants to like role play that I'm like being really forceful, but we have like a safe word and we know that like everything is consensual even if we're pretending like it's sure, not, yeah. you know. No, that's like that's like CNC, that's like consensual non consent. That's a total thing. Yeah. I think I think that there are a lot of people who enjoy that dynamic for sure. Um but they enjoy but that they, just, they enjoy that dynamic can't. in a comfortable space. Yeah, and you can't just assume that a girl you're on a date with that's the dynamic that she prefers. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, that's a com that is a that, that's exactly. Like people only find CNC attractive when they feel safe. Um like you have to yeah. establish like boundaries first. You have they have to feel safe before they like prefer that. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I really don't think we're at no, disagreement we're at all. No, I um I, me, maybe I was a little bit forceful with it, but I mean, really, at the core of my argument is that a society where everyone gets consent, at least on like the first date, 
is a safer society than one where people just read body language. Yeah, like that's right. really from my the, argument. From the get-go. I th- yeah, I think that if, at the end of the day, like just teach young men to ask for consent until they like m- like emotionally and physically mature better and sexually mature so that they can actually read women well. Because men, the men also grow at like slower rates. I don't. I personally don't think men really like. It's like twenty five is when you actually become like a functioning fucking human being. Honestly, and that's yeah. something from my like, personal experience. So, like just being a dumbass until that point. Um. But, yeah, it's it's you know, weird that we consider an eighteen year old an adult when they're still like their brain's still developing in a lot of ways. Yeah, especially young men because I know like women generally like uh, we say update faster is the worst. <laughs> women generally tend to mature faster, is my understanding, and I think I've seen that demonstrated before. Um, that just gives men more time to be smarter. You know what I'm saying? No, but all jokes aside, I think that that's like a pretty normal thing. Um, but yeah. You know, but I don't think like Spooner Dude or Nick are bad people at all. I think that Sp- like Nick was just fucking around. I forget. Oh yeah, because he just made that one silly video about like uh, consent or whatever. It was. Well, fu- he, I mean, he, it was funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny for context. I, uh, <laughs> it's just that like sometimes he'll make these jokes that you don't know if like his actual opinion is different than the joke he's making, or if he's like actually trying to push that opinion by making the joke. You know. Mm-hmm. But I guess at the end of the day, it's probably best to just ignore it. <laughs> Not well, yeah, get triggered I mean, by it. I think Nick holds the idea that you should read a woman's body language. Well, it's a very ma- that's a very masculine perspective, which is nothing wrong with it because like women obviously like masculine men, but like. You know, it becomes very tricky because it's not the engagement that's necessarily wrong. It's the power dynamic. It's the 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 very the ease of abuse. The ease of abuse in the power dynamic is what's like more concerning than anything else. Um, yeah, and that's absolutely. where I focus on more than anything else because it can be very easily abused, and it becomes like a situation where women can very quickly and easily get put into a place where they're submitting because they feel like their life is at stake, even if it's not. But it's like again, if they feel like they express like a no, they feel like they're putting themselves in even more danger. So they're like, okay, well, I'll just take it so that I don't get like violently hurt. Um, you know, and we don't yeah, lose really, it, you know, as a society. Just really, like, hey, ask for consent. Yeah, there's really no downside except for this hypothetical girl that gets turned off by asking for consent, which is like, I feel like just something that they're throwing out there because they don't want to have to ask. Well, I, th- oh, I just fucked up. Oh, I just lost it. Oh, I still, oh, no, I didn't. All right, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I don't think it's that they don't want to ask for consent per se. You know, I think part of it too is that different people attract different people. Um, and they, like Nick Foster and, uh, well, let's just say Spooner Dude, he might attract more, um, like, stronger women. And so, like, in his sphere, he's attracting stronger women. And so, like, he it, he doesn't necessarily need to uh, get, like, you know, verbal consent in his space because those women are going to stand up for themselves. And he's the kind of guy that's not going to, like, you know, do anything. But then there are other people, who, like, I tend to attract, like, I guess you could say, like, more damaged women. I don't know. That that just don't, they don't expressly, you know, they don't feel comfortable um, uh, in, like, in the dynamic, the traditional dynamic. They, like, they get very intimidated by, like, a stronger man taking advantage of them and they'll be more submissive. So maybe it has to, it also has to do with the type of partner that you're attracting. Uh, I don't know what kind of woman yeah. Nick attracts. I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, I, I totally I totally agree. And I, I agree that women should always feel confident and strong and being able to say no at any time. I just think that it's like dangerous to assume that you're with a certain type of woman. Like, oh, yeah. Until you've actually like talked to her about it, you know? Um, yeah, no, that's the problem too, is like, how do you, how do you differentiate what type of woman that you generally attract? Like you don't like young men are dumb as shit. They don't really understand what they do or don't want young people in general are dumb as shit. Let me just make that. Uh, so like young boys don't feel like I'm targeting them, but like, yeah, younger people don't really know what they want necessarily. It takes a while to like decide. So you're not going to be able to differentiate like, Oh, what kind of woman do I like? It's like, okay, you know, you're going to have a hard time deciding that. <clears throat> Did I spell consent and, wrong? Fuck. And yeah, if, if you're like certain that the woman that you're with will just say no if she's uncomfortable at any time then it's not as you know not as much of an issue especially on like a first date that's where i focus more than anything else yeah i i just i mean in my opinion more communication is always better than less communication more communication always leads to like more people being safe except if you've established that the girl is turned on by less communication, and then once you've established that, then well, I wouldn't even call it less communication. I would just say that they that they they've communicated that they don't want like the active consent. Like yeah. that's I don't I think it's still communication. It's still setting boundaries. It's more about determining the boundaries set. 
Um, maybe maybe we're all going about it wrong. Maybe we should be we should say like, hey, before you even get to that physical engagement, you should have a conversation about you know what you like. I don't know. Like you're like, hey, when you're sitting down at Applebee's, you talk about like, uh, hey, what, what do you like? Do you like the guys that just go for it, or do you like guys who you know feel it out in this whatever? You know what I mean? I, I think it's I think it's like tough because you're navigating that first point where like you're not sure if you're going to date them or not or you're not sure if you're going to kiss sure, them yeah. or not. So then when you're like in that state of not being sure if it's a relationship or not sitting down and having a conversation about like what your boundaries are could be like, whoa, you're going too fast or whatever, you know? Yeah, right. Let's see. Nick Foster TikTok. I, somebody said that these newest TikToks are about me. I saw one that's about me. Uh, it was. Oh, really? It was no. He was like when I when I made a joke and then Papa Gun Spooner were sitting down talking about it or something. It's like funny. But yeah, he he like obviously slippery slope straw manned me. He oh, was yeah. like, oh, now you're gonna have to have your girlfriend sign a contract whenever like you want to hold her hand. And like obviously that's just an an exaggeration. Well, yeah, it's yeah, a joke. of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Nick's gonna do. So like Nick. Um, like Nick obviously has values, but he generally won't talk about something in a serious context. Um, and he'll just make a, make a joke out of it. So like not really talk, which is fine. Like whatever. That's just what Nick does. He's not like super, that's like super, like he's not trying to be like super like social or political. Um, but like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you know, it, it's, it's just, he's, he's, it's just the problem is he's touching on very serious issues. But then at the same time, I realize that I'm kind of losing the second I take Nick seriously and try to have a serious debate across yeah. TikTok with someone who's trolling. You know what it is? It's like, yeah, no, I can understand. Like some young men may take Nick's word and like take it the wrong way. And then actually he might end up uh, like, you know, creating a very toxic mindset for young men. But then at the same time, approaching it in a particular way can turn people off to like your message. So like Nick made that video and then, like, I made a video, and I had, like, Clay do edit, where, like, I pretended that we talked about how consent was sexy, and, like, we did it in a joking manner. You can't really respond yeah. seriously to Nick Foster. Um, <laughs> so, like, that's the best, your best bet, because he's not going to engage you in, like, a, like, a social or a political conversation. So, like, yeah, if you wanted to do it, you could, you, you'd be better off making a joke. Like, just responding with a joke, having fun with it. Um, yeah, and I think that's what I'm going to try to do moving forward is just, I mean, people followed me for comedy, so I totally get when people are like, Ryan, shut up about your opinions on this thing. I'm just wanting to laugh watching you. So Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to do that because like, obviously, I'm fortunate in this space that like, that's my, that is my content, social and political shit. So like talking about that isn't something like people disagree with me. Like, people in my chat disagree with me. Like I'm with Spooner. Like, okay, that's fine. But like, that's my concept. When you make a point, though, it's like, oh, people are like, oh, this is what I followed you for. And then it turns into like this whole thing where you end up getting a lot of shit. Um, yeah, you know, I would say that justifiably so, um, which ends up fucking you up, but yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, hard. I, I need to get better at not letting all the negativity get to me. I'm not, I'm just not good at it when Trust you have me, like hundred, uh, hundreds of kids, hundreds of kids, like flooding you with negativity. No. Yeah. I, it's funny. Cause I've like, I had similar things like uh, somewhat recently, like I'll, I had like a take and it was like a fine progressive take. And then like people are shitting on, like I, I've been learning to like stop responding to like the criticism. Um, like I'll, I'll, I understand how to like, you know, take criticism and to like better myself. But like some people, sometimes people are just not going to understand where you're coming from. And like, it gets frustrating, but like sometimes you could just do the best you can to put out a palatable message and then people are going to believe what they're going to believe. Um, and like also just because somebody disagrees with you now doesn't mean that they're not going to sit on what you said like taking a shit at three in the morning a month from now somebody might go like wait now i understand what ryan was saying you know what i mean and you kind of have to value can, the the time it takes like uh, to get to where we're going you know that's why i say when i go into conversation i'm always looking for like i don't i disagree but i understand is what i always look for and if i get that then like i feel like i've won like it, i've won enough yeah, totally. You can plant a seed and it's better to yeah. have a conversation and can like I hate when people argue and then someone will say something that they actually do agree with, but they'll just disagree with it because they're in a debate or whatever. You yeah, know, I hate that, too. I hate that type of like bad faith conversation. It's really triggers the shit out of me. It's like just it's super bad. I run like funny enough, like someone like Tyler Bowman, like generally doesn't do that. Um, he actually has pretty honest conversations with me, which is like, actually because people are like, oh, Tyler Bowman's like an asshole or whatever. But like, I, I, I appreciate Tyler for like that uh, type of stuff. Yeah, I, I think it depends on who he's talking to or who he's debating. That's probably true too. Yeah, he generally, with me, he's good. Yeah, 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 with me, he's good. He's always... Are you, uh, 
are you having Victoria and him on your stream, or is that like they, not happening? They they they've bullied me into it. Yeah, um, I hate abortion conversations, but they want to do it. I have to touch base with Victoria because, like, she, last I heard, she didn't want to do it because Holler wants to wear the hat. I don't know. Fucking hat, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, talk- I had a conversation with him just like probably like an hour ago. I'm like, Tyler, like, about the hat. I'm like, how did you take the hat off? He's like, no, no, no. Because he w- basically, he uh, he didn't like, I- it seems like he didn't like that Victoria had so many ground rules in the first conversation. Like, he's just like living or dying on his hat. And I'm just like, listen, like, you might think she's oversensitive, but like, it's, it's just, it's, it's a fucking hat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, I think it's because I think it's because he wants to sell more of the hats. Honestly. I think he just likes to be well. Maybe I mean I respect that, but he wants to be antagonistic as well. Like it's Tyler, like he likes being a little antagonistic, which I get it. It's just like you know, I feel like there's a time and a fucking place, um, you know. And if you're if you find that to be an important conversation, you might want to concede the wearing of the hat to have it. Like, could, like regardless of whether you're trying to like trigger people or whatever, like don't you think that like debating a serious topic like abortion maybe you shouldn't have a hat saying grab her by the pussy regardless of the context like you know that's a good point yeah i i, I can agree with that sure yeah it's, <laughs> it's tyler's just you know what tyler one of the things i like about tyler is like i grew up in like a I, in the area i grew up with there's a lot of ball busters like tyler it's like very normalized so like i'm used to it um, yeah. that's why like I appreciate it like a lot of like moderates out here that just bust your fucking balls and they just do it because like they like to have fun and poke fun at you and it's like okay I can get it because I do that too so like that's why I don't mind it like but like you know it's one of those things where like I express to Tyler that like I even agreed with Victoria like me personally I don't give a shit about the hat but I understand why she did and I agree with her and then like if she decides not to have the conversation because of that like he you know it's on him um, but that's the best you could do and then he's gonna, not gonna believe what I say necessarily but like yeah, that's the best you could do with some people you know but most people even myself people say shit to me that it's like oh it's like okay I hear what you're saying but I, I'm not you know it takes a long time to change like a little you know to make any headway on any type of thing but like you yeah, know he's just trying to fuck to around <laughs> But at the same time, like, I don't necessarily agree with Victoria that he's just trying to, like, dodge the debate. I think he's oh, just no, trying No, he's to, not. Both he's just of them trying think to be that, an asshole about it. Both of them think that about each other. Neither of them are trying to dodge the debate. I think that Tyler's yeah. just, like, trying to, like, live and die on this hat because he, like, thinks he should be able to. And then Victoria doesn't like it because it's antagonistic. And, like, she, part of it's just because we know it's antagonistic. And Tyler knows I think, that. I think every, everyone knows it's antagonistic, yeah. But. Yeah. And Tyler knows that. And so he's like, he's doing like, you know, or Victoria knows that it's antagonistic. So he's like, ah, I don't want to have the conversation because I know you're just trying to antagonize me, which is something Tyler does. He's antagonistic. It is what it is. You know, that's a Tyler. That's, that's a Blumman trait. Yeah. Yeah. At, le- at least when I talked to Spooner, like we definitely disagreed a lot, but I feel like we at least weren't being super antagonistic towards each other. Except when he started, he went off on a rant about how only ugly women want consent. And I'm like, oh okay, God, dude, that's yeah. like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's not true. Uh, I do I not. Like, no, yeah, yeah. not at all. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I, I just, uh, I don't, I don't, li- I don't like generalizing a group of people just because they like disagree with you, you know? Yeah, no, I think that, well, probably like I didn't, I didn't watch it. I was hanging out. But like I, I watched like a couple of minutes, like a minute of it. I'm like, I can see where this is going. It's just going to be like a back and forth, and it's going to be a little more argumentative. <laughs> it's just good. yeah. We basically just went in circles for an hour. I mean, that is what it is. So okay, I have a question. Like you don't have to answer this. People keep saying like, did you ban a like a forty five thousand people on Twitch or something? One of my followers is like crying about it. Um, no, so I actually had a conversation. I didn't ban anyone, but I had a conversation with my mods afterwards. I think my mods, um, they're very, very nice people, but I think they do tend to be a little overly oh, zealous they with, a little far. With, with with banning people. I, I tried to talk to them afterwards. I'm like, you should ban someone if they're being like clearly just hateful and antagonistic. But if someone, while I'm in a debate, is just giving like a differing opinion. Yeah, they just like, disagree with you. Like, who cares? I have all that all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah just let them. So I, I need to talk with my mods more. I did not personally ban anyone. Um, but... Uh, with the conversation of i know you've said like when people ban other people it means they're weak or whatever but i kind of in my opinion i kind of view like my platform and my channel as kind of like my business and like if you're if you're running a business and some person just 
runs in the door and starts screaming hate at everyone. It's like you yeah. can tell that person to leave. Well, I I ban out. I ban people who are actively racist or if they're being incredibly rude. Like I don't care if you disagree, but I've banned people before. Yeah, no, it's a different plot. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I generally would say try not to ban people, but like there are people who cross the line. You have to have like a, a clear line. And like, yeah. you know, I, I, being racist or screaming at you and being like, you're fucking stupid. It's like, well, that's not the kind of person that you need. Like, that's not. So especially on here, Twitch is more about a conversation. So if you have somebody who's at, who just makes like their whole thing of escalating a conversation, not being intelligent about like their disagreements. Like, yeah, you don't want that person on your platform. I 100% agree with that. And And it's tough because like having people who are just spamming hate comments towards me makes the like the it's less enjoyable for the people who actually do like my content to be watching and just see the chat filled with that so it's like hard to make oh, that sure. balance that's definitely i can see that as well but yeah i i i did i did sit down with my mods afterwards and said like you guys are being a little bit too ban heavy and then of course when you ban people then it creates makes you this look narrative. bad yeah it creates this narrative of he doesn't want to hear differing opinions he just bans everyone so yeah you get joe roped then yeah, yeah, I would never, <laughs> I would never go the Joe Robe route of limiting my comments. Like, I feel like, I feel like if you're putting out opinions onto the internet and then you limit the comments, it's like, shouldn't you have to at least let people give the opposite opinion? Yeah, absolutely. As long as it's respectful, like it's always fun to have these conversations. But uh, yeah, but, like, it, but if they're just like you're a pussy virgin, like I'm like, well, <laughs> you're not. Really yeah, it's like, well, there's nothing constructive about that. At that point, it's like, what are you saying to me? Like, this isn't helpful it, for it's anybody. It's just an insult, and you're not really adding anything. So it's it's a tough it's a tough line to walk. Oh yeah, you know, you just gotta try to do what's best overall. But it does get like really annoying and stressful and like frustrating. People are just like f being just they're just intentionally being like you know stupid, and they're just like yeah. fucking around too much. I totally get what. That. Um any other questions people in your chat have been asking? I haven't really been paying it paying attention. I don't know. Let me see. Let me let me let me upgrade my let me upgrade my character first. Okay, I'm playing balloons, Ryan. All right. Okay, that's very important. Very important. Hey, listen, I've enjoyed balloons. You know, it's pretty good. You know? I it's crazy because like I get I don't know if you know like I play World of Warcraft. Like or I, I was playing World of Warcraft. I get like more so many more viewers playing fucking balloons. Oh, really? Yeah, people are like, I hate WoW. The other day, I popped on early for like a sub-Saturday because I had to go later. Popped in. I started off a WoW and I had like 55 viewers. And then I played Balloons and it went to like 100. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you guys, <laughs> you guys really hate World of Warcraft a lot. Huh? I think maybe they just don't get what's going on. And with Balloons, it's like pretty fucking simple. I think that's like... it too because like I watched, I was watching somebody else play WoW like, like a little, uh, like yesterday for a second. I'm like, wait, what the fuck is this? And I was like, okay, now I understand why people don't care. But with this, is like, you get it. There's towers, there's killing stuff, balloons is poggers. Uh, I don't know if anybody yeah, else has anything in the chat, though. Somebody wants to kiss you, though. Okay, I'll, I consent to that. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, there's a weird... Um, there's a weird thing with streaming. I'm like, I want to stream like story based games, but at the same time, if someone joins my stream halfway through the story, then it's like, they have no idea what the fuck's going on. Yeah, you probably just bet. They probably best bets just to like do what you find enjoyable on your stream and like hope people like it um you know yeah. this is there's a balance to play um are you gonna get back into stream have you been streaming a lot i feel like you have I, I i haven't no i took i took a few months off because of the whenever i'm feeling like shit like health wise it's just really hard to get me to like stream but i i really want to get back into it i'm working on a big big youtube video at the moment so i'm hopefully going to be releasing that pretty oh, soon and then oh very cool what the what is the what any anything uh you know that you can release drop for us to know right now? uh I, i'll i'll tell you i'm just working on like a it's like a 2020 the musical so basically oh, cool. the, the idea is like each month is its own mini little song that kind of just chronicles like what happened throughout the year basically it's like a you know satirical poking fun at you know all the dumb shit that happened basically oh well, that sounds pretty cool that's definitely cool yeah i've been taking a break from like youtube a little bit um like i haven't put a lot of stuff and a lot of content to put up because you know with trump losing like it's just like obviously i knew the content was going to be like the political de the desire for politics was going to go down which is totally fine but now i'm just like okay what do i want to do because even when trump lost i became like a little bit less like interested in politics i like social issues so I've been just kind of feeling it out, feeling out what we're talking about. Um, and we have been having a lot more conversations lately, which yeah, I think it's has like been I, going better. 
I, I don't want to, like, not care about politics anymore, but I think a lot of people, they just got so fucking exhausted, and now that we kind of know what happened, it's just like everyone's trying to take a break, you know? Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. So that's why, like, I've been doing more conversations. Those are a lot of fun. I have another one tomorrow, and I have to, like, you know, host this fucking Victoria and, and Tyler thing, of course. <laughs> but Tyler's like, it'll be views for you. You could do it. I was like, okay, I guess. I just, the topic of abortion is, like, something I'm not particularly thrilled with. It's just, like, one of those things, man. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, like, abortion really just boils down to, like, a morality debate. Like, it's such a complicated thing that you can have so many different perspectives on. Oh, yeah. It just gets tough and, like, you know, it's sensitive for a lot of people and, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like a fucking... It's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate type of a thing. But... It'll be all right. It'll be fun. I'll have I'll enjoy. I also don't know what the fuck I'm doing to like debate. Like, what am I gonna do? What do I moderate? What does that mean? I'm gonna moderate. Yeah. Whenever I watch, whenever I watch other streams and shit, it's like moderators just kind of sit there and then like correct them if they go too far or whatever. I guess. Yeah, yeah. They're just like vibing. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, that's what they said. Like, just correct if we go too far or something. I was like, okay. I guess that makes sense. Um, <laughs> you, you get to sit on your own stream not doing shit, basically. Which is, I guess it's like a day off for me. I don't know. I guess I should appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I, I guess mean, I should appreciate it, yeah. I think it'd be more interesting for you to give, because I feel like you, you're pro-choice, but you're kind of more in the middle on the issue. And I feel like hearing those three perspectives where you have someone who's more far right, far left, and more in the middle on the issue. Yeah, I'll we'll, you know. I also don't know if I want to. I don't steal too much from them, but yeah, no, I, I might, I might. We'll, we'll feel it out, like how much I want to like push or not. But then also, see, that's the problem though. Is like if we talk about a specific debate, like me interjecting, uh, like removes the like I want to win aspect from it, which makes it less of a debate, more of a conversation, you know. And then of course yeah. I have my own biases, but I try to be like somewhat like objective about it, even if I am pro-choice. Um, but it becomes like a little difficult. But yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, they'll, they, whatever I decide to do is what I guess they're gonna have to deal with, <laughs> if they even have it, because Victoria might not do it. What What is the purpose of having a debate rather than a conversation? Like, what? I, I think it's just a win, and more than anything else, I like I like honest conversations. I think they're much more enjoyable. Like, I like to be able to take people's words for what they say. I mean, I like I fact check some things. But, like, some people, you know, I like to be able to, like, generally take, like, what you say, like, Facebook. Like, okay, I can trust that. That sounds like it makes sense. And then you have people who just actively lie. I kind of learned that with my conversation with Consciously. And, like, that's why, you know, I'm a little bit more, um, I'm a little bit more, like, socially aware. Or, like, I'm more, like, uh, when I say policing of what I'm listening to because of that. I, I really like Consciously, but my personal perspective is, like, okay, sure, you can say that individual racism is not racism or something, but it's kind of just, isn't it just semantics at the end of the day? Like, what is the real difference between prejudice and individual racism? So, the usually where the conversation, like, comes from, it's just, okay, so usually they try to bundle it all together to make, like, a point that, like, hey, like, race is, like, individualized racism is a derivative of, like, systemic racism. And it, to an extent, that's true. Um, the problem yeah, is, I think, yeah, I that's, think if, if, if a white person does something individually racist towards a black person, it's much worse than a black person doing something individually racist towards a white person because sure, speaking. Sure. Yeah. I would agree with that as well because white people have the systemic power. Which I would means I would say it's more generally speaking, cause there are instances where it's not true, but generally speaking, it's more because of like the justifier. So like if a white person is racist towards a black person, usually it's based on like some kind of white supremacy. If a black person is racist towards a white person, it's usually based on like the notion that white people think that they're superior and it's like very reactive to it. So I can understand that, but then like it kind of comes down to like, well, what, like, what do we gain as a society by bundling individual and systemic racism? And, like, we don't gain anything. Like, you just said, like, a points of inequality when you exclude white people from being able to, in any capacity, from being able to be the victims of individualized racism. You're demonizing white people and you're, like, creating an environment that allows you to hate white people. And it's, like, the only thing is, like, well, they, we, they have the power. It's, like, okay, but if the goal is for them to not have the power, like, well, what point do we no longer set this ridiculous standard? And, like, that's the kind of thing moving forward. I can understand why people... Uh, would want to make that because they want to like reverse the oppression but like if the goal is equality that doesn't exactly you know help at all in any real capacity yeah and i feel like overly divisive rhetoric doesn't usually bring more people over to your side oh, no, like you a like a cab kill all men or like saying that like black defund people the police can't. yeah it's like 
maybe move funding around to more education oh, yeah. rather we, than defund it. We always know. we always talk about reforming the police here. Like the reformation of the police is like what we should what should be being said. Um, because people who are saying defund the police, they're usually like, oh, well, the police are over. Uh, you know, they have too much of a budget in many instances, so you should take away that money and you should put in other social programs. And like that sounds like a nice idea. Uh, but it's not usually practical because there are places like New York who probably can like reduce their funding and then reorient it somewhere else. But they have strong unions, so they won't. And there's places probably like Alabama who don't really have the funding they need and they just need more funding. And so like when you focus on defunding over reforming, your goal is to hurt the police more than it is to actually solve the real issues like lack of accountability due to body cameras. Um, and like implicit bias training and things, situations like that, and like or and um, training when it comes to people who have like cognitive disabilities, like and that, those should be the focal points. Should be like fixing the problems, not removing the funding um, more than anything else. Like that's where I come from. I think with that, I think I think the difference comes in is that you have to understand there's a difference of perspective between like liberals and leftists because leftists actually do want to like abolish the police because they think that there shouldn't be agents of the state that can well, exert power it's, over you or whatever. It's funny that you say that because like everyone that I've heard that says that is always like, but there should be some form of police, just not the one we have right now. And it's like, well, you gotta have something. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you have to, there has to be some sort of like punishment for people who break the law. Like, I don't oh, yeah. think you can just have, I'm definitely not an anarchist in any way because I feel like that's just going to cause chaos, you know? Yeah, no, you need a form of police. I know some people are like, oh, yeah, but like, um, but the police specifically, like, they were like derivative of like racism. Um, and it's like, I under, like, or like white supremacy at some point. I'm like, okay, that's probably true, but like, so was like abortion, like the Planned Parenthood. So, like, you know, to, to deny the evolution of things is rather ignorant, in my opinion. Well, and uh, so many things in America today stemmed from a racist place. It's oh, like, sure. Even the even the Constitution was written from a uh, from a place of racism, not believving black people were people. So, yeah, it's right. Like, it's just like you know, they, we kind of have to like acknowledge that there is that we are making progress, even if it's not fast enough, which is fair. I mean, it's easy for me to say that because, like, obviously, I, it doesn't have a negative impact on me to be like, yeah, it's be a little more patient. But like, it still is like the truth, you know. But um, yeah, what would be the point of like dissolving the police and then creating something that's the same what, thing? What's funny? <laughs> like, what's funny is that like yeah, the favorability of police amongst black people is like lower than white people, but like black like overall black people like the police. Like they they appreciate police officers. Um, like they generally do like police. Like they have a decent favorability amongst the black community. Um, so like they don't want you to remove the police. They just want the police to be better. So like some ways you do that. Obviously, your police like the body cameras. Um, Commu like honestly you, you should have more police from a particular community being police officers would help a lot because if they have like more like relation if they have a better relationship with the cops they're less likely to commit crimes and disrespect the, the police um there's yeah, a lot outside of outside like people yeah it's do, weird. Do, you th do, do you agree that like they that black communities are over police like there's too many police officers <sighs> i mean people okay so i think I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't know. So, like, obviously, if you put more police in an area and there's more crime being committed or you're catching more crime, you can make the argument that some of it's more crime and then some of it's, like, actively looking for crime where, like, normally, like, in a white area or, a, like, a better a, an area with more money, uh, they might have crime, but, like, they're not looking for it. That's kind of the thing. Um, maybe. I don't know. I feel like, you know, if it's possible. Because, I, I mean, the argument from one side is if there's more crime, then you need to crack down on crime more. But then that doesn't always actually lead towards those communities improving just by cracking down I, on crime. I think when we talk about those things, we it's usually like over policing with the a lot of times when people talk about over policing, like the subtext is that like there wouldn't be crime if there weren't cops. But like in poor areas, like it's like a fact that there is more crime because usually crime comes from like a lack of opportunity. So, like, it does over-policing happen? Maybe. I don't know if it's necessarily relevant to identify as long as you are somebody who acknowledges that there's a class issue that we need to solve. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, maybe there's over-policing, but it's so irrelevant. What we need to do is, like, redistribute wealth in some way. And, like, at that point it doesn't matter if there is or isn't over-policing because now we're going to focus on, like, the real solution, if that makes sense. And that you could bring the level of policing down once those communities yes. have, yeah, have yeah. the wealth distributed. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because sometimes, you know, you get locked into, like, these nuanced arguments that don't necessarily contribute to, like, a positive conversation. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you that UBI sounds like a pretty cool idea to me.
Yeah, I'm all over the UBI, slowly turning everybody in here to a Democrat. I don't even like it. People, people are like, oh, that's so weird. It's so bizarre. It's just, some people like hate the idea of a UBI. Some people like it's not capitalist, which it still maintains capitalism, like private ownership and whatnot, I think is a good thing. Um, but then like, you know, you have like, um, you have like, I guess you call them tankies, the fucking uh, communists that are like, no, never. I hate it. It's still capitalism. And communists hate it why because they think that there should be no money or well i always say this like communist people like i don't think the communists are realistic worldview but it might be in the future but like you're not going to get there by like uh, having a revolution you would get there by implementing slow change and i would say that ubi is like the first would technically be a first step towards communism i don't want it to ever get there but if you're going to make a step it's gonna it's not going to be a radical revolution I, I think the the time when communism could be possible would be in a post scarcity society where people just like we all just have a place to live and we don't have to worry about food and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because you know, if, if automation keeps heading in a direction, it could get to the point where you know all that is just automized, and then you know we just got to figure out what society means now that we don't have to work for everything. Oh yeah, for sure. I think it's gonna be like something like you said, like lack of scarcity. There's gonna be when there's lack of scarcity, there's gonna be less like greed in society. Like it's training people to not be greedy, and you would do that by giving them like things to you know this way they wouldn't feel like they needed to constantly you know look for the next buck. It's just not realistic right now. I think that like a good thing about capitalism is it allows the people who are better to rise generally to rise to the top. The people who are uh, better for society, like maybe they're better like math or STEM fields or social work or whatever. Um, I just think that we need a better like poverty floor to allow people to be able to get there and also i don't think like you said automation is a thing and so like not everybody's going to be able to contribute to society in the most functioning way so allow people who aren't necessarily good for or not that they're not good but they're not necessarily able to contribute actively to society allow them to live so that they can they contribute passively because simply existing and paying money for things still contributes to society like you're still like pushing wealth you're pushing find like money through the system uh in a way yeah, that, you're like, putting it back at, into the economy yeah yeah that gives more jobs for people like it's it's all very it's a very circular thing what, what do you think about the argument that like capitalism creates false scarcity because like we have enough food in america to feed everyone but we just don't because if we fed everyone then there wouldn't be as much money being spent on the food you know uh i mean that's definitely oh, i just lost fuck uh yeah no i mean i can understand how capitalism creates like false scarcity. sure like it's basically due to like egregious uh wealth hoarding that like you're finding these scarcity situations more and more absolutely i totally understand that that definitely makes sense um I just don't know that like communism necessarily remedies that because it's very, I would say it's, you know, you, I don't, I don't really know that I see, um, like how, cause capitalism does, I would say create a false uh, scarcity, but then also I would say that communism doesn't create the technological like advancement that we need. Uh, to be able to, guess, to offset that. I don't really see like a high incentive yeah, that- for people to better themselves. That's so like, why I've always I've always thought that capitalism does create like innovation to a certain extent, but I guess I guess the reason why I would lean more towards communism in a post-scarcity society is if you've innovated to the point where everyone is like at least like taken care of. But sure, I mean yeah. obviously you want to keep innovating. And I don't think in a communist society people would just like stop innovating just because they don't have like a, a cash incentive to do so, but it could be people would do that less i think that like if you want to get to a point where people do things to be nice you'd have to like slowly change the mentality of people and that's not something that could happen now like i would say that the reason that like it would halt one thing is because of like profits like not allowing people to have like the resources to uh, reinvest into particular things but also because like yeah people are very incentive driven right now like obviously we're all very greed driven i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing but maybe we could be reattuned as a society to not be greed driven but like that takes that takes a working that takes some time to get there you know and I think communism is just such a like a utopian ideal and like it it all the times when people have had communist revolutions there's been some asshole who's come in to take advantage of that, you know. I mean, listen, even if your argument's that like capitalism ends up like consuming like uh the socialist states are trying to become communist, it's still the reality of the world. So like you have to kind of re- you have to kind of contextualize it cuz it does happen. Like if a if a if a country went communist, like yeah, capitalist countries that want more power are going to consume them because capitalism is generally ad- an advocation for more power. It's a more it's a, it's a more dominant society rather than 
live in like a more empathetic society. Um, or you just get totalitarianism and yeah, then they right. Just you just have like some dickhead that's like, I'm in charge now. Fuck you. Yeah, you force. Yeah, you have you all wanted to be equal and now you're all equal and I'm the one who runs everything like. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. It's unfortunate because I haven't had a conversation with a communist that's like had given me like a well, I guess Vosh kind of. Like I he was like, Oh, he was just like, Hey, would you be fine with moving uh potentially to communism at some point? I was like, Yeah, sure, but like not right now. He's like, Okay, like that's it. That's a ra- that's a rational yeah. worldview. It's like, hey, we need to take steps to get there. I don't want to get there, but like if it happened and it was better for society a hundred years from now, who the fuck am I to say? You know what I mean? Like we have to do I think that we just need to uh change this our you know, our societal standards and practices based on what we need more than anything else. Yeah, and I think the the biggest idiots are the people who just focus on the revolution and don't like actually think about how we can practically fix things right now. They're just head in the clouds, like thinking about hundreds of years from now when there's a communist well, it's revolution. not. E- you know, it's funny. It's not even like it's not even like they're thinking a hundred years from now when there could be a revolution. It's just like they're just they just think that you can't get there through like any level of like progressive change. And I think that's like kind of like that's like a bit of an issue that I have. Yeah, I, I literally saw I literally saw tankies making the point like that they wanted Trump to become president because like the more suffering there was for lower class people, the more likely they would be to do a revol- like to revolt or whatever. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, no. And that's like what's crazy because I've had a conversation with somebody. I was like, OK, uh, like I was talking about like implementing UBI and they're like, no, it would just make people. What did the word that he used? Um, complacent, I think. He's like, they would just stop caring. And I'd be like, well, yeah, because they would be happier. He's like, no, complacency doesn't equal happiness. I'm like, okay, but like you get complacent when you become like happier. So like if you gave people more rights and a better distribution of wealth, you're going to see them be complacent because they're not going to have as many issues. It's like, wouldn't no. People be, wouldn't people be more complacent in a communist society anyway? Well, like- I think he meant complacency in like the, in the reference to like how outraged you were by capitalism existing. I'm like, yeah, like uh, you would, okay. you would ca- yeah, that's what, yeah, uh, you would, you would care less about being like about being oppressed because you wouldn't be as oppre- opp- oppressed. Oh my god, these fucking dogs! Because you wouldn't be as oppressed, and he just like, you know, he's like, no, 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 that's not how it works. I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's just yeah. A I, I don't, I don't know if I don't know if I if I'm for the idea of like abolishing money and all that, but I, I kind of the more I'm thinking about it, I kind of do like the idea of of market socialism, where basically the idea is that you would have like more joint ownership in a company Mm -hmm. and that like when when people were talking about market socialism i'm like oh well does that mean that everyone just makes the same amount of money and it wouldn't necessarily mean that it would just mean that like the labor you put in you get like compensated for correctly because the problem the problem is now that like the whole the whole capitalist model is like that all the workers are creating more value than they're being paid. And then all the, all the value just funnels up to the top, you know? Sure. So basically the idea of market socialism is that rather than funneling all the value up, you would keep the value more evenly dispersed, but like people like it, it doesn't mean that like everyone would make the same amount necessarily. No, I understand what you're saying. Like basically the workers like owning the means of production in their particular company. Right. Like that's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, that's fine. I think that, like, there's something to be said about having uh, one person or, like, a smaller group of people at the top to be able to make decisions because it's probably going to be better, like, having, like, uh, you know, individual leadership more than group leadership because it gets, like, very, like, finicky and very difficult to promote. My, where I come from more than anything else is, like, you know, I would say, like, that could work. But my thing is, is, like, I don't think it works in a sweeping way. So, like, let's say we did, um, We'd implemented that. Let's say we implemented uh, like uh, you know workers owning owning workers owning the means of production. To me, that let's say that solves the issue with the middle class getting less and less pay. But how does that help poor people make more money? And I would say it doesn't. And that's why I come from like UBI because UBI does that. It pays like I would say it overvalues you for your, like if you're a McDonald's worker making minimum wage, you're probably getting more value through a UBI and McDonald's than you would be by owning the means of production in that company. And that's why I come more from like that perspective of like fixing it from that from there because like there's a diminishing returns on money. So I think that people probably who are minimum wage workers they probably should make more than their labor is worth. Or I'm fine with it at the very least. Um, because it like advocates for them to actually be able to live on like a like a you know a menial like wage job. Um, so you're saying the the labor that they're producing wouldn't be worth enough to 
for them to survive off of. Maybe or maybe not, but I'd say, well, yeah, pro- I mean, probably. Like, I don't know how much, like, how much they truly make, like, at McDonald's. Like, I, because my, my mom worked at White Castle and she never gave me a concise answer, but uh, my understanding, like, they don't have massive, like, um, they don't make a massive amount of money. So, like, let's say you're making, um, what's the minimum? Let's say $10 an hour is the minimum wage. Let's say you're making $10 an hour and you're making, you're working 40 hours a week. So you have $400 a week. I say UBI gives you $650 a week. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if a, if a fast food worker is going to make $250 more, which, like, what is that? Two fifty? Is that what, what's that per hour? I don't know. Um, whatever that is extra per hour, I don't fucking know. What is that, like $8 more an hour? I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen. Well, I th- yeah, I think the idea is, like, if they're selling burgers, then they would get, like, the profit off of the burgers that they're selling or whatever. But then obviously you would have to then f- still factor in all the overhead costs and everything. Yeah. Right. That's, that's why I think you're just better off like, like slightly shifting the system in a more realistic Like UBI, I think is more practical than like taking McDonald's from, from McDonald's. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that, Cause it, that, yeah. that is, that is one of the issues. It's like, yeah, socialism sounds good, but then you'd have to like have govern have the government come in and force all these corporations to do that. And none of them are going to want to do that, which is why they're like, you can't have socialism without a revolution, you know? Yeah. Right. And like, we have, and you got to fight the fucking fight, the fucking corporations or whatever. Sure, yeah. Even if it is better, let's say like, it is better for workers. Only. Like you said, like it's unrealistic. Like people aren't going to give up that power. And like, you might think that's fucked up, but like, that's the world we live in. So, you know, what do you, what do you want more? Do you want, a good step in the right direction or do you want to just cry about how you want something specifically because there are also people who are fine with the way things work that like middle class people are generally fine with it like they're like okay like we're com- we know this we know this system works and if you radically shift the system you could end up like having a system shock and fucking everything up so like that's why you'd be like oh let's implement this because you could sell people easy on ubi rather than like expansion of welfare and like workers owning the means of production because it's and still I've- capitalism which people are mostly comfortable with and I, f- I feel like also moving towards more unionization again could also help. Like, it's also it's really fucked that unions have, have decreased so much. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I could def- that definitely is probably, see, that's probably, like, a necessity in some capacity. Because when you implement UBI, like, what's stopping, like, the companies from paying people less money now that there's more money to be made? So you need to have some kind of, like, a unionized America to make sure people maintain the amount of money. Which is why, like, I would say implement something that says, like, oh, if you, you can't, like, give raise increases on more than you give your average worker. Like, you can't give a 10% increase to a fucking CEO and give a 1% increase to a fucking ground, uh, you know, person. Or even or more than that, like, I mean, honestly, we need to blast it. We need to get our taxes back up to, like, higher percentages. Because people are like, oh... Back in the day, there used to be like a 90% like uh, marginal tax rate on people who made a lot of money. And they're like, yeah, but people didn't actually, uh, what happened is people you didn't generate a lot of money from that um, because people, you know, they would just not get paid that much. But that's the point. So if you increase like a crazy tax, let's say you put like 90% on like a million dollars a year. I don't know what the fuck you'd say. So that's everything you make over a million dollars a year is in tax at 90%. Well, people are going to, mm-hmm. they're going to pay people less in the company and you would theoretically see that money get paid more to their other workers because there's no point overpaying somebody because the money's just going to be taken by the government anyway. So like well, either they overpay or, it and the, money, the government gets the money or they don't overpay it and they would theoretically take the extra money that they would have paid somebody and put it back into the company, hopefully through the workers. And that's why you would have such high marginal tax rates. Well, but or, or couldn't they just keep inflating the stocks and having that go to the no, shareholders or whatever oh like giving yeah maybe i don't know specifically like that's possible there was something with i don't remember what it was but there's was something where like there was like a stock loophole that used to never exist and now it's like all fucked up um because people can like you know get paid in stocks and whatnot i think that like generally speaking raising taxes for for individuals um like a very high marginally I don't know if people in the chat know what marginal means. So marginal would mean like, let's say it was 90% at a million dollars. That means that you would get the normal tax rate up to a million. And then after a million, everything would be taxed higher. That's what a marginal tax rate is. Yeah, um, people don't get that. They think if you're making a million dollars and you're taxed at 90%, that means you give up 900,000. Yeah, no, it's just that like if you make a million and $1, that $1 gets taxed at 90% and the million gets taxed at whatever. I think our, I think in general, we have a marginal tax rate. Uh, like So like your first 12,000 is tax free. Then like 12 to like 30 is like 15 everybody has that kind of that's how it would work um do that and actually get comp- uh, companies and like businesses to actually pay their taxes and then all of a sudden you know i think that you would see like a better like use of the money like people would like start paying their workers more because like well we can't constantly invest into us because we're just gonna keep getting taxed with the ass so and there's uh 
I know Andrew Yang has talked about VAT taxes as well. What is that value added? I don't quite understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so a value added tax um a value added tax is basically a tax on pretty much everything except for I think it's food and clothing, right? So it's, it's a, he's talking about a 10% tax increase. But he's basically talking about like a 10% tax increase and they, they can be there's good there's pros and cons to that. So for like somebody obviously flat taxes like disproportionately uh negatively impact poor people because if you have to pay 10% more of your basic living expenses um so if you're if like if you're only making ten thousand dollars a year and you used to pay eight thousand and now you're paying eighty eight hundred, obviously it's gonna fuck you more than somebody who makes a million a year and they were paying a hundred thousand now they're paying a one like you know one hundred ten thousand. Um, mm -hmm. So it can have negatives in that space. Well, that's why like clothing and food are like omitted from that. But it doesn't. I don't think it can. It doesn't contextualize like the just the sheer number of increased jobs that are going to exist. Um, Is it? I, I thought the value added tax was like just the the corporations were paying that and not the people or something. No, oh no. So it's like, a, it's basically, it's a tax that makes it difficult. My understanding, uh, a tax that makes it difficult for you to like dodge it um, through corporations. But like, yeah, no, it's, it's basically a 10% tax increase on like uh, everything other than like food and clothing. What I was saying before is like, I, what, so people always talk about how it could like negatively impact like middle-class people or poor people specifically because it increases like the amount of money they have to pay for their basic necessities. I, I would say that as two things. So like, let's say, you know, if you're poor and you were making twelve thousand dollars a year, well, now you're making twenty four thousand dollars a year. So, if you're paying ten percent more for your shit and you were paying ten thousand a year, um, and now you're paying I don't know eleven thousand dollars a year, but instead of making having one thousand dollars left over, you now have like a ten thousand. Like, if, obviously, you're going to make more. Also, there's going to be more job opportunity available because, like, if you put like a bunch of money into some impoverished area, um. And I don't know, just like, fuck, I don't know, fucking, I'll say Alabama. Like, obviously, companies are going to be like, oh, shit, let's go there and take their money. So you're going to see, oh, shit, I just fucked up. You're going to see more people, you're going to see, like, more businesses go into, t God, more businesses uh, go into areas they normally wouldn't because they're going to want to suck up some of that wealth. And you're also going to see people be able to, like, actually um, afford to open small businesses. Yeah, I definitely think that is one of the upsides to capitalism is it can stem economic growth obviously yeah right and like i think that there's something nice and like people stay to meme this sometimes but there are areas where you could say like yeah capitalism can work some things out like it is entirely possible that capitalism can work some stuff out yeah i just think i i just cannot get behind the libertarian idea that you should just let capitalism run amok because like then you end up with jeff bezos who has <laughs> yeah no it's, hundreds of billions of dollars and all it's, that. yeah you know your capitals can't work itself out purely like some things can work themselves out if they're regulated decently like people talk about how there's gonna be massive inflation um because there's gonna be more money into the economy so like businesses are gonna charge more oh my god but when it comes <laughs> it's fucking i don't understand like you know, but when it comes to um like business like uh, removing land ownership aside because like of course there can become like an abusive system when it comes to uh like trying to rid the department like obviously yeah let's say mcdonald's increased their price well like burger king like they're gonna want to still compete with other markets around there so they're not going to drastically increase their prices in a way that's going to like hurt their business they're going to do they're going to keep it as cheap as they possibly can so in like those spaces like you're you're going to see capitalism work out the inflation increases it's more of the spaces where um People like rent or own, like rent uh, homes where you might see like drastic increases in the amount of money you have to pay in apartments, and that's when you can implement some form of rent control that says like, hey, you can't increase more than what is like generally justifiable. Yeah, I, I feel like that's super important is rent control because yeah. yeah, I I definitely agree with socialists when they say that like um, landlords don't really add much value to the system; they kind of just <laughs> buy up buy up properties and then i mean obviously running a property is adding some value but they're mostly just like yeah. siphoning value right and like listen i have no problem with people owning apartment buildings i really don't care i think i'm fine with it like you know what i mean like i generally like less government control so if an individual owns property and they sell it out fine but 
we can obviously come to the like understanding that like there is a point like if 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 your apartment costs two thousand dollars a month and then a UBI hits and they're like oh fuck it let's just make it twenty five hundred that's not a justifiable increase like they're just trying to take your money from you but if they implement it and they're like okay we're gonna raise it to twenty one or twenty two hundred dollars it's like okay I understand why you had to raise your 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 costs a little bit maybe you have an increase in like a particular cost fine but like that's what I mean like when it comes to like justifiable and like rent increases and like how you know if you're only a lot of people's only argument is like the reason we can't implement UBI is because then you know apartments are going to raise their price it's like okay so like you're just totally fine with like an abusive system and i'm like very confused by that like why are you okay with that <laughs> yeah you have to re- if if that's going to happen then you have to regulate it so yeah. it doesn't it's then if, if if the market can't normalize that then like clearly there's a flaw in the market and i like the general market but like this there are flaws we have to acknowledge that so you, you don't think that every like fast food company across the board could just like agree to raise the price and you think the free market would make it so that the prices when it comes to like that I don't I mean I don't see that uh, as real I don't see it as happening because like, if that if that were true like you would see that now like right now McDonald's has like a dollar drinks any size and like you're not seeing other companies being able to compete with that they're all just trying to compete for as much money as possible so I don't think that they would monopolize themselves to try to take as much money as they possibly could <clears throat> but com- companies realize that sometimes when you lower prices it it actually re- leads to higher profits because you have more people coming there yeah it's, right you know, exactly cheaper. i really do think it would work itself out in that scenario because it's not like you cannot you can just be like fuck you mcdonald's and go anywhere else you can go to burger king wendy's the supermarket but like if a, a how the like, um living spaces are different you really can't just like up and leave your living space not only is it hard to find somewhere else to live but also it's very expensive to move so it might cost you a thousand dollars just to move out and then also you have to put first month's rent down. In some areas, you have to like pay an additional month's rent, basically just to get it, give it to like the um, I forget who it is, the person who gets you the house, the, the apartment space. So, you know, you're looking the ti- like title company or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So like right now, if I wanted to move into a place that was two thousand dollars a month, I would have to pay six thousand dollars up front, and then I would have to pay like a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars just to get my shit there. So it's like, okay, you're gonna cost some of it cost me seven thousand dollars to move. So I'm gonna have to pay an extra five hundred dollars a month. Because that's cheaper, even if it is like a level of abuse, which is what I would say. Yeah. And that also applies with monopolized industries. Like, I feel like Amazon is is pretty monopolized at this point. For the most part, I would say that like it is a fairly monopolized. I will say that Amazon does compete with Walmart. So like yeah. they still do compete. Like there's a level of competition there. It's probably not as much as it should be, but Amazon isn't a pure monopoly because Walmart gives them a run for their money constantly. Walmart still maintains business fronts, which like uh, allows you to get your shit now. And they also actually are expanding in that online space, and they're able to give you massive deals because they're so big and streamlined. Uh, and then there's also places where they know that they can take like a, a profit loss just to like pull people to come in, which is an abusive tactic. But Amazon does the same fucking thing. They did the same thing to bookstores, which is why. You're seeing so many like uh like bookstores like put out of like they lost like three billion dollars putting bookstores out of business. They just did that intentionally to kill bookstores, which is an awful fucking tactic. Yeah, it fucking sucks for the, all the. I mean, it's, I feel like that's bad for the economy because you're losing all those people's jobs. What's that? Like all the people who ran those bookstores all lost their jobs because oh of being yeah put out of business. But then, like, of course, and like the terrible offset is like, yeah, it's a, a there's a product that's cheaper. That's like that's the balance you play between like automation is like products become cheaper because they're faster and easier to make, but they also don't require people, and people are more expensive to employ than like a fucking machine. But then also, like, it's good that it makes it cheaper, but then it's bad that it puts people out of business, which is why a UBI kind of like takes care of that problem because now you get a thousand dollars a month. All of a sudden, you might just open up some kind of like a land business. You might be like, hey, I'm gonna open up a this, and then I'm gonna open up this store. And even if it, even if the online market might be able to, like, let's say, compete, like, let's say, um, let's say Amazon can offer that product cheaper, um, you know, you may still want to spend a little bit more money at your local business because you want to support local businesses, but also because you have an extra thousand dollars a month to actually do that. So, like, it's a there's a lot going on when it comes to like UBI. Yeah, I definitely like what Andrew Yang says about how you know UBI would make it more incentivized for artists and creative people and and you know people right to actually do something they enjoy (laughs) yeah something that they i mean 
technically you and me don't add that much value to the capitalist system. I mean, I guess we do for, for Twitch and for TikTok. So I guess we are adding value to those platforms. Yeah. Well, our jobs exist, probably wouldn't exist under some kind of a capitalist society, honestly, or a communist society. Like I'll, what the fuck do I do? I just like try to reduce tensions of people. Um, <laughs> and educate people but this like this is like one of those things where like capitalism has done a good job for me because like there's a space that's been created where i get to like you know do something that you normally wouldn't like why would you monetize this scenario you know what i mean like why would, well, I, why under, would a communist un, uh, situation monetize this why would this be like an actual job well under communism i guess the idea is you wouldn't monetize anything so it's it was, it's hard to flesh out because a lot of times when i talk to people who are communists they i hate this is the thing i hate the most about arguing with like communist kids is they'll say i'll ask a very basic question like hey how would you value somebody more in society who works harder so like let's say how do you value a doctor more who went to school for at least nine years versus like a janitor and they're like well that depends on how the society wants to operate and it's like you can't give me a vague concept <laughs> You aren't you the have, one who's aren't you the one who's trying to say how we should run society yeah, yeah and they're like no no but it's based on how people vote and it's like but i need you to tell me because this is a very important thing because even if you don't like capitalism capitalism gets people to do jobs they normally wouldn't want to do pretty well like you know why people are garbage men nobody likes digging in the garbage and smelling like shit but you get paid more like a lot because like nobody wants to do it there's a financial and a value incentive to doing a job that normal people wouldn't want to do that's one of the good things about capitalism is it does put people in spaces uh, it does it fills out jobs by having like different incentives for those jobs yeah that's a really good point yeah i know ups also pays pretty well even though there's like a huge burnout rate like people usually only work for like Bro, six months ups is brutal out. ups is fucking brutal brand man it's fucked there's no air conditioning you're like out there all year round. It's fucked up, man. It's it's I I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, my, my friend my friend did it for for a little while, and he was like, my back is killing me. And this was like a young dude who's like in good shape, and it like fucked his back up. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, UPS. Yeah, UPS, the United Postal Service. Not to be confused with USPS. That's somebody just asked about it. The United States Postal Service. Yeah, yeah. very interesting. So. But 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 why why I, someone gave me the argument of market socialism, which I was like, this is kind of interesting. They said that a doctor, because you still have the market, like a doctor would make more money because their labor is creating more value to like it's creating more value than a lower. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, well, that's like democratic like socialism, order. right? Yeah. Yeah. So so under that situation, like there would still be that hierarchy of like if you get a job that takes all this education, then you would still make more money because you're just making what you're creating in value for the yeah. hospital or whatever. And it does make it difficult to like, subs like sub substantiate like what people's value is worth. But I understand what you're saying. Like, I don't think it's like, it it's, it's one of those things where as long as you can answer the very basic questions of how do you value people more in society to get them to do more things and how do you get people to go into particular jobs? Like you, that, that, you know, as long as people have like a general concept of that, then you can have an honest conversation. But see a lot of young kids who invest their energy into like educating themselves on like Marxism, which is totally fine. But like they don't, they, they bypass the ground floor. They don't like think about the very basic stuff, but like you need those things. Like, how do I get somebody to work a job? And it's like, well, let's not worry about that right now. Let's move through the pipeline of my thought. But it's like, well, that's kind of a very important aspect, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, yeah, I feel like under a communist society, everyone would just want to like be a YouTuber or something, like just do something yeah, maybe, fun. Like, just be like no. somebody that's chilling, you know? Yeah, who the hell would want to go out and be a garbage man that is a really good point no yeah um are you are you gonna stream right now because i'm probably gonna get off for now uh no not not today Just, okay uh, it was yeah. good good talking to you man yeah you too oh uh, really quick okay i don't know i so i have a team now on twitch i'm a partner so i have a team um and i invited you to my team on twitch so if you want to join it it's a bunch of other youtube like spooner dude and nick foster are probably going to be in it but it's it's for a bunch of other tiktokers to be able to like i don't know if you're watching my stream but to be able to um, more easily like network. So if you look here, this is the team right here. It just, it puts down here. It's be like, oh, this is Ryan Beard right here on the team. It says, but it's team gut. You'd click that. And then it has a list of other um, TikTokers here. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm so, pulling it up. 
Yeah, yeah. It's this way, like, it's very easy. So, like, if you like, let's say you like me, you go to, like, Team Gut. Who else is on right now? Like, oh, Curly Daddy. We have, I have uh, H1T1, Ben Estrick, uh, this person, uh, like, Robert the Thief, Jay Ray and Spooner Dude are in here right now. They've all accepted. So, yeah, I think it's a great way to network with people. And I think, oh, hell like, yeah. I think it passively, if you're offline and you're not hosting somebody, it automatically hosts another person who may be online. So, you know, there's, there's, some, there's some solid shit. Uh, nice here. yeah I, I knew that there was like auto hosting but i guess is this team thing a new thing that they've implemented i don't know if it's new but like i just figured it out so <laughs> it's new to me how's that hell yeah all right cool yeah, yeah. i'll definitely accept that all right my man well you and take I'll, care i gotta I'll listen to... awesome have a good one man yeah sorry sorry i didn't mean to cut you off. i'm gonna listen to these motherfuckers yelling at me and then, uh, but have a good one and definitely join the team and like i hope we could talk again soon all right hell yeah have a good day man you too take care Say thank you so all right, much, guys, it. to all my Patreons, and a special shout out to my Papa XL Patreons. Without all of you guys, I would just be some fat dude screaming into a microphone. So thank you so much, guys. Mwah, I love you all. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face, but just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face.